encounter with the lady as protectress. It was early evening. A farmer, his wife, and a woman who that afternoon had begged the farmer and his wife to shelter her for the night, had just eaten supper and were engaged in leisurely conversation. Suddenly, a group of gorgeous civiles entered and started searching the house. The farmer quaked in his bare toes, for he had just hidden some leaves intended for his after-meal smoke inside a tapayan. Of course, he had taken the precaution of placing it under the dapog, a raised platform on top of which were the earthen stoves and under the pots and firewood, to make it appear as containing rice and of covering it with dry banana leaves secured tightly with twine around the mouth. But the Guardia Civiles could not be easily deceived. They saw the tapayan and hold it from under the dapog. What do you have in here? One of them asked the quaking farmer. Nothing but rice. It was the woman, the family's guest, who answered. Unbelieving, the Guardia Civil opened the jar and reached inside. The frightened farmer and his wife held their breath. They looked at each other with miserable eyes as they mentally calculated how much the fine would be or how long the imprisonment would last. But the miracle of miracles. The Guardia Civil's hand came out peeled with rice grains. There was not a trace, not even a whiff of the concealed leaves. Satisfied that the house had no concealed tobacco, the Guardia Civil's left in the terror and astonishment of the moment. The farmer and his wife had forgotten their guest. They looked for her, but the woman had gone. Who could a strange lady be who could change tobacco into rice? Who else but the Virgin Mary herself, the patroness and protectress of the barrio of Calaba, where the incident was said to have happened. A brief history of Calaba and the people's devotion to the Blessed Lady. Calaba is a barrio in the municipality of San Isidro, Nueva Ecija. It was founded in 1833 and used to be part of the town of Capan. This area was initially described as densely forested. It developed, like other forests, a habitat for various animals. The most prevalent inhabitant are bees. The type of honey produced by these insects is so distinct. The people have been harvesting this valuable gift of nature for the population of the area since that time, which was used to treat variety of ailments. The history of the people's devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Lady of the Most Holy Rosary, is linked to the accomplishment of the distinctive name of this woodland. When some villagers reached the woodland, they were astounded to see an image of the Blessed Virgin Mary on top of a tree. There was a white object at the foot of the Virgin's image, 
which they discovered to be a lime. They removed the beautiful image and realized that the lime was encased in honeycomb. In Spanish, lime is called cal. And people exclaimed, Cal Aba, an expression of the locals. People shouted out once they detected white lime, indicating that the honey was ready to be harvested. This is where the name Calaba got its sublime origin. The honey found at the virgin's feet strengthened the frail, cured the sick, and encouraged the faint-hearted. A recognition of the devotion, an establishment of the parish. In 1961, the small chapel dedicated to Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary in Calaba started its major construction to what would become years later as the parish church under the auspices of the then Reverend Father Enrique Reyes, parish priest of San Isidro Labrador, and the homegrown philanthropist, Attorney Conrado Sevilla. Concerted efforts were raised to bring into realization the said project. Through God's bounteous graces, and Mary's miraculous intercession, the parish church was consecrated in 1964 by the late Bishop Vicente P. Reyes to serve the pastoral needs of the barangays of Calaba, Santo Cristo, and San Roque in the historic town of San Isidro. The people expressed their gratitude to God for this gift, which they recognized as a gift from the Blessed Virgin. The Lady's original and distinct beauty, rediscovered, revealed. The miraculous image of La Virgen del Santo Rosario de Calaba is approximately 200 years old. In the early 2000s, the image was fashioned to resemble the Our Lady of Manawag or La Naval de Manila. When it was decided to remove such a clothing, however, an image with detailed engraving and a very attractive appearance was uncovered. The image was painted multiple times until the color was covered and the original state was lost. After nearly seven layers of paint were removed, the image through color was revealed. The Virgin wears a blue mantle and is clad in pink, and the infant Jesus was clothed in white. Calaba commemorates the feast of their beloved patron every 7th of October. People return home from the cities where they work or study to glorify God and to honor the Blessed Virgin's protection over them. A festive celebration, a grateful people. The residents of Barangay Calaba are well known for their festive celebration of Barangay Fiesta every third Sunday of the month of May. Out of their jubilation and thanksgiving to the Lord through the intercession of the Blessed Lady for the bountiful blessings, the residents have kept a traditional festive celebration which are no longer seen in other places. 
They beautify the streets with artistic arches and colorful buntings. It is indeed a delight to behold these arches and buntings in the evening because all of streets are colorfully lighted. They also paraded Carosa and Sagala with a theme which resonates to the current concerns in the society. Through this, they are able to make the festive celebration more culturally meaningful and socially relevant. People from nearby towns and provinces used to visit this small barangay to share the joys of its residents. Aside from the feast day of their patrons, parishioners who are mostly farmers are also dedicating a special date of thanksgiving to God for the bountiful harvest held every last Saturday of November. For Barangay Santo Cristo and first Sunday of December, for Barangay San Roque. These Thanksgiving celebrations are commonly known as Pistang Puto. They usually make Tahada, Kalamay, Suman, and Biko, which are all rice cakes. Sometimes, these celebrations are also referred to as Patapos. Since they have ended the harvest season and in thanksgiving, people celebrate together as Christian communities of farmers. These celebrations have found their essence as thanksgiving to God through Novena, Triduum, and the celebration of the Holy Mass.